Hey, what's up everyone? I just wanted to make a quick video on how to pass the NASM Certified Personal Trainer exam for the NASM 6 edition. That's the latest edition at this time and I don't believe there was many videos on YouTube, at least from when I searched, pertaining to the actual 6th edition. So I just wanted to give you guys a few quick tips. I'll also try to link in the description box or categorize each different tip that I already said in the video so that way if you guys prefer to just read it out that will be helpful but it'll just be very high level with not much description there or you can just watch the entire video it's up to you whatever's going to help you pass um, but I did just take my NASM exam on a Sunday it's currently Wednesday and or excuse me I took it on Monday but it's currently Wednesday and I took the exam and I did pass if you can see there but I did pass and <clears throat> I'll just go over real quick what I used to help me pass what package I got, how to get the packages, and also what else was helpful, any other helpful tips that I used on the outside. But just to begin, I used a self-study program. That's the most basic package. You just get the textbook, electronic files, and the ebook. And I just wanted to save money. But if you guys are interested, you can normally get it on a discount depending on what time of the year you purchase it. And they also offer student military discounts, things like that. So you just want to consult with NASM. There's also another form of getting the programs themselves. You can get payment plans. So that way, if it's easier on your pockets, you can do that as well. But without further ado, I'll just get into the tips real quick. And I did write a very brief list just so that way you can keep me on track without derailing. But the number one tip would be to read the book. I did read the book from start to finish. I normally don't read textbooks at all, but I felt like I would have to read it. I don't have much knowledge in actual training itself, the actual sciences that go into it. I've been training for eight years in the gym myself, just kind of doing whatever I saw on YouTube or anything like that. But this reading the book from beginning to end really gave me a better appreciation of what the skill and the actual expertise of being a trainer provides for and what you need to know and have the knowledge of in order to be considered a personal trainer at least, or at least a good one. So read the book from beginning to end. That's a very big tip. The second would be uh, to watch the lecture videos that comes with each chapter in your electronic module. Those videos are only like three to five minutes long at the most and they always cover high level stuff that you should have captured or made note of in the actual textbook reading. I just highlighted the textbook reading um, whatever I found important. Let me see if I have an example anywhere here. See, it just highlights anywhere throughout the book. But whatever's going to work for you, you can write notes throughout the book, uh, write notes in your notebook, whatever's going to help. So I did watch the videos. That was the second form of studying. And then the third that's already offered by NASM would be the practice quizzes. And you could take those. They cycle through, have a few different questions each time up to a certain point. But I would just take those. Also, with on the same track of practice quizzes, there are two practice exams for the final, so you know what to expect. There's one that's 100 questions, one that's 120. They're meant to simulate the types of questions that you'll get in the exam. And I will say a lot of them were pertaining to that practice exam that I had. So if, you, if I were you, I'd go over those exams, and you could take them multiple times, but they are the same questions. So just be mindful of that. Aside from that, I reached out to NASM to understand what pertains to each domain. Now, they consider domains multiple chapters, so there's six total domains consisting of multiple chapters, but they're not in order. So, uh, domain one may not necessarily have the beginning of, of the textbook. It may have chapters towards the end as well. So, just reach out to NASM and see how they have it laid out at that time being, depending on what type of edition it is. And that way, you can also go back to the study guides that NASM offers in their electronic package. And you can print those out, go over those notes, make note cards like I did. And that way you'll be able to remember some of the more key tips. There's also like a knowledge highlight or questions that is offered for each chapter. And it pretty much says, can you explain this? Or what happens if uh, this hap if this were the case on a client? And if you can answer those questions, then you're more than likely being able to digest the information well. And you know what you're talking about up to that point. So that will keep you on track as well. Um, aside from that, I know you have to have a general understanding of the muscles, overactive, underactive muscles when you're talking about the overhead squat assessment. Now, if you don't know anything about the muscles, I know there's a chapter that goes into it and they have an appendix. It's a lot of stuff to try to remember. I think for the most part, you just want to have an understanding of the major muscles 
and the rest will kind of fall into place. You'll kind of understand where they are and have an idea. And I know a lot of people are recommending like uh, Poke a Muscle, I believe it was, on like um, Bone Arcade or Muscle Arcade, something like that. I'll try to find the link and put it in the description. But that is a game you can play, it's like three stages. And I think I played it like four total times and I was able to remember a lot of the major muscles. So it helped me out with that. The Now that's pretty much it for the studying portion. Now, as far as the actual exam is concerned, the types of topics that I encountered were things like the overhead squat assessment. If you don't know how to determine what's underactive, what's uh, overactive, short and lengthened, what needs to be stretched, what's too tight, anything like that, then you're going to have a lot of problems when you have to actually take the exam because there were a lot of questions pertaining to that. The best way I could recommend, there's a video that I've seen on YouTube, I'll try to link it, that uh, goes into the overactive, underactive muscles that someone did and they actually were able to help me rememorize it. I'm also intending to do a video myself on how to recognize the overactive, underactive muscles. Uh, just give me some feedback and let me know if that's something you'd be interested in and something that's helpful and I'll be more than glad to do that. The other topics, I didn't see a lot about nutrition, some bare minimum, few questions or so about nutrition, exercise sciences, uh, the actual modalities, the OPT model, those are things I had to encounter in the exam. But again, the actual exams may be different pertaining from each person to each person. I do believe it's just a pool of questions. So my exam may be very different from what you may encounter. But they do break down, if you reach out to NASM for the domain information, they will break down the percentages of what that topic will cover in the exam, whether it be 15% of the exam is based off of this or what have you. So just so that way you have an idea, that would be a, a highly recommended way to remember and be prepared for the exam. I can't think of any other topics. I mean, I have a good memory, but those were pretty much it. The the questions I saw, a lot OHS, overhead squat assessment, a lot with the OPT model, dealing with different types of clients, senior clients, youth clients, how to work around uh, different guidelines of how to train with those types of clients and pertaining to those clients of all ages, stability, strength, power, and what type of exercises are considered each. So what's a stability type leg exercise? What's a power chest exercise? Um, and things of proprioceptiveness, a lot of terminology stuff. That's pretty much what's in the exam and that's what you can kind of expect. So again, if you follow all the tips that I already had written out, and if you have maybe another package, a higher level package that goes over maybe more questions or more things than hone you into what the exam will pertain to, you'll be more than fine. I'm telling you, the exam was two hours, 120 questions. I was able to finish mine, I think in 35 or 40 minutes. And that was after going back to question one and reviewing all 120. And, um, you know, feel free to take as long as you want on the exam. You get two hours. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it was two hours seemed more than sufficient enough to pass. And you should be more than qualified enough to pass the exam should you go through all the steps. Now, going forward, as far as with this channel and what I intend to do, I really just want to get in, out into the field and start practicing legally as a personal trainer. And I hope to post more videos on this YouTube channel. I also have like Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all those other things. I'll put links in the description below. So that way, if you guys are interested, feel more than free to follow. And hopefully you guys can see me around in some other videos. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Best of luck to you.